1982, Eastern State Penitentiary was intended to serve as a model of prison reform. A staff of cruel and inhumane prison guards administered some of the harshest punishment imaginable. Prisoners suffered horribly at the hands of those savage captors. These souls still haunt the prison today. Tonight, we pit two paranormal investigative teams against each other to see who can record the best physical evidence of the paranormal. Somebody push me? Whoa, this is Paranormal Challenge, Eastern State Penitentiary. I'm just so happy. Go, 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 go. He said your whole life's been over One night, one haunted location, one winner for the ultimate in bragging rights. I've investigated this place twice, and we've walked away with some really incredible evidence. Zach Bagans, the Paranormal Challenge Chairman, is also lead investigator and co-founder of the highly respected Ghost Adventures crew. Listen, shh. He has completed hundreds of investigations, working with the world's renowned paranormal researchers and scientists. This place makes me feel excited as hell, and I can't wait to watch these teams battle and see what happens to them. Northampton Paranormal. Based in Bath, Pennsylvania. My name is Scott Wiley. I'm the founder and leader of Northampton County Paranormal. For how long I've been doing it, yes, I can set up an investigation. I can almost predict where something's going to happen. My name is Chris McGowan. I'm one of the second lead investigators. Chris is a skeptic, but that brings the edge to us. He's like our little pretty boy. We use him as bait. And in a prison, he'd be perfect. My name's Scott Burke. I'm the audio video tech. Being Native American heritage, we're just taught that everything has a soul or a spirit. And that makes a total difference when you're doing an investigation. We look at everything in a scientific view and analyze everything before we give our judgment. We have gotten results everywhere we've gone. The other team better watch out. Tri-State Paranormal, based in Metuchen, New Jersey. My name is Sharon Henson. I am lead investigator and I am the co-director of Tri-State Paranormal Research. I'm Peter. I'm an investigator with TSPR. He does help us do preliminary investigations and he does the actual investigation. It makes me feel very peaceful about death. I mean, I don't fear death because I know there's something afterwards. It's not, it's not an end. Tony is the mouth of the group. Tony is the one that I have to tell to be quiet or I'm going to shove a cell phone right up because you know what. Sharon always bugs me. She's annoying. She's I'm just kidding, I'd rather. She's great. I think we're going to win. Right now we're standing near the center rotunda in Eastern State Penitentiary. Teams, how you doing? Good. 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 How you doing? This is Charlie Adams. Charlie is an author of Philadelphia Ghost Stories. He's also a radio show host here in uh, Philadelphia. Me and this guy have been in Al Capone's cell before. Did you know that the guards claimed that they would hear him screaming like a little girl? That's right, screaming like a little girl. Because he feels that the spirit of a man that was victim to his Valentine's Day massacre came back and haunted him in his own jail cell. And before you teams go off and investigate, Charlie is going to walk you around to all of the areas that you will be investigating tonight. Pay very close attention to every single detail he tells you. I like Eastern State Penitentiary because it does have a reputation of being one of the most haunted locations in the United States. You can walk around and talk about how many inmates were here and about how they used to bake bread and they had classes, but you have to know the real dark history. This is a fortress of death. Cursed by savage wardens and dehumanizing solitary confinement, Eastern State Penitentiary was a gothic temple dedicated to depravity, isolation, and torture. Originally designed to revolutionize prisons in 1829, the degrading rehabilitation techniques drove inmates over the edge. Now shuttered, this crumbling complex is said to be a vortex of paranormal activity. We are on the third level now of cell block 12. I want to show you something here. Get in that cell. Not only the prisoners, but the guards feared for their lives. Let's say I'm a guard walking down here doing my job. That cell door is open. And that prisoner has a lot of anguish, a lot of fight in him. 
I could easily be pushed over the top down to the bottom. My neck would be broken, my head would be crushed. These bars were put in as a sort of an afterthought after something like that happened here. This is where the worst of the worst were incarcerated. Common criminals were put in with murderers and rapists. Suicides, murders were committed here, cellmate to cellmate. Feeling that the guards were poisoning him, a very paranoid prisoner named Joseph Taylor managed to get a sewing machine and encountered a guard, Michael Doran, and bashed his head in. Wow. Killed him. After that, satisfied, he took a nap in his cell. It takes a really mentally disturbed person to actually smash somebody's skull in because you thought they were poisoning you and then just get back up and go take a nap. Prisoners who were particularly ornery were brought to this baby, the mad chair. They were strapped to this chair, gagged, their circulation was cut off. They were here for days and they went mad here, hence the mad chair. There was solitary confinement, that's one thing. But then there was the hole where all hope was lost. Vicious criminals were dragged down here for days and weeks and even months of punishment. Bread and water, rats, no light. They lost touch with reality and their own senses. Barbaric. I, I think I'd probably lose my mind within the first five minutes. Elmo Smith, a prisoner here, uh, known for kidnapping, raping, and murdering a young girl, is one of the quote-unquote famous prisoners here of death row. Good luck here at Eastern State Penitentiary. With the competition set to begin, Zach gets each team geared up with the most advanced paranormal detection equipment for tonight's challenge. How you guys doing? Good. Good. Look at all this equipment. Each of you are going to receive the same exact pieces of equipment. Two night vision cameras, one on a tripod to use it as a static camera, a thermal imaging camera, two full spectrum cameras, one a camcorder, the other a digital still. You have a melmeter that measures for electromagnetic energy and temperature. Two digital recorders for each team. I got no time to waste. The sun is setting. Suit up. Get ready. Wait for my signal. And then you guys will be released in Eastern State Penitentiary. Have fun. Teams will conduct their investigations simultaneously. Northampton Paranormal will begin in Zone 2, and Tri-State Paranormal will start out in Zone 1. Strict time constraints are designed to push each team to the limit. They will only be given two hours to complete part one of the investigation, then switch locations and continue investigating for two more hours in part two. Teams will be judged on overall teamwork, technological proficiency, historical knowledge, and audio and visual evidence they are ultimately able to capture. Tonight's judges are three of the country's most notable paranormal experts. Dave Schrader, acclaimed paranormal conference lecturer, co-author of The Other Side, A Teen's Guide to Ghost Hunting, and host of the wildly popular internet talk show, Darkness Radio. Aaron Sagers, published author, nationally syndicated journalist, and editor of ParanormalPopCulture.com. And Alexandra Holzer, daughter of famed paranormal investigator Hans Holzer, author of Growing Up Haunted and syndicated columnist for OM Times. Tri-State Paranormal, are you ready? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Northampton County Paranormal, are you guys ready? We're ready. The portals are open. Let the challenge begin. Let's start the clock. Judges, they have two hours for this first part of investigation. Chris, I think uh, I'm going to send you down to the hole. How's that sound? That sounds good. I'm going to the hole first, guys. Yep. You ready to go? I'm ready to go. I'm rolling. All right. Okay. All right. I'll see you guys. Good see luck. You guys later. Good luck. All right. Happy hunting. Okay. Here. Joseph Taylor was in one of these cell blocks here. He bashed in uh, Michael Duran's head. Mr. Taylor, if you're still here, do you want to bash our heads in? And as far as I'm concerned, you guys deserve to be here. And I don't feel at all bad at the way you guys were treated. 
Maybe you like the bash and pizza. Ooh. That's a very high EMF here. Oh. This is very odd. What was that? What was that? Did somebody push me? Dude, what is that? We're about four minutes into the investigation, and folks here at the Nerf Center, we're going to be able to watch every single move they make. We're going to be able to listen to everything they say. Each team is assigned one camera operator and one sound technician to chronicle their investigations. And both areas are equipped with several stationary cameras. Three big pet categories that we should be looking out for are how well they use their technology, the equipment that they were given, um, how well are they using the history that they learned earlier during the walkthrough, and uh, also uh, teamwork. Teams will conduct their investigations simultaneously. Tri-State Paranormal will begin in Zone 1, which is cell blocks 4, 12, and 10. And Northampton Paranormal will start out in Zone 2, which is cell block 14, Death Row, and The Hole. Looks like right off the bat, both teams are sending a member of their crew by themselves on the solo cams. That can really attract these spirits. You're less intimidating to the spirits. Now, Chris here is actually going into the hole. He's actually there now. And I heard, uh, I heard over here that Chris uh, shows fear. So, uh, looks like these teams are going to use him as a piece of bait. This is creepy down here. He's looking really nervous, nervous and comfortable. Yeah. Well, it's easy to watch behind here, guys. I've been in there, and uh, once you're in there and it's pitch dark and you're by yourself and you're held where some of the most evil inmates were housed, it's a different story. Now, what I think is interesting, Scary. too, Zach, is Tri-State Paranormal Team has elected to send the, the, their teammate Sharon down first as a woman into a prison wing mm -hmm. known to be uh, housing some of the most violent male criminals. That's a pretty ballsy move on their team right away. Let's check in on Sharon. This is Sharon in cell block 10. Looking for anybody who might want a visitor this evening. Listen, guys, this is your only chance because the rest of the team are all guys. Is there someone down there? We're here at Death Row, Eastern State Penitentiary. We're looking for an Elmo Smith. Tell me how you can rape and torture and kill a 16-year-old with a crowbar. I hear you like being called Tickle Me Elmo. Is that true? Good use of history. Scott Burke and Scott Wiley here, they're really starting to improve the, uh, the level of provoking that they're trying. And I'm thinking that these guys throughout the night, they're going to be ones to watch. Throw something at me. There you, you know, go. bad hat of hurting women. There you go. Yeah. Good, Scott, good. Was this your cage, Elmo? Huh? Was this your bed? Okay, that just cut off. Full battery just drained. We just had a full spectrum camera uh, go out. Looks like it died out on them. Already? Yeah. Spirits can use batteries. Yeah. Suck it up like they're. Sucked it right dry. Energy. Well, let's check in on Sharon. Just a poor middle aged lady walking down the hallway by herself. Fair game to anybody. Ah, a bad chair. Has any of you gone mad in that mad chair? This is a place where some sick, sadistic torture happened. Historically, she's getting the area where she is correct, which is great. Somebody just pushed me in the back. Somebody pushed me? 